Again, today's tour is here at the church of Santa Maria Annunziata, Annunciation of Our Lady. It's a pretty little church right off of the Via della Conciliazione. First image you see when you come in is San Michele, beautiful statue of St. Michael, and Jesus carrying the cross. Death of St. Joseph. Beautiful icon, probably part of a fresco dedicated to a lady. Mercy in Jesus. Great fire. This is a privileged altar. Angel Gabriel announcing to Mary. Simple little church. Another St. Michael, Our Lady of Lourdes. We'll close this brief visit. The image of Our Lady crowned, nursing Jesus. Ave Maria. Continuing our entrance into Chiesa Nuova. Nice piazza here on in Vittorio Emanuele. And we're going into the church, Chiesa Nuova, dedicated to St. Philip Neri. Double doors. Oh, smells innocent. And here you see side altar dedicated to St. Philip Neri. Okay. And now we're going into the church, parochial parish of St. Maria and Ravicella, Congregational Oratorio of the St. Philip Neri, also called Chiesa Nuova. So this is, oh. Oh, this is the copy. Oh my god. This is Caravaggio's deposition, but it's a copy one of his students made. It's not, you can see it. Wow, we saw the original at the Vatican. Side altar connected with arches. See the original transfer to the Vatican. This copy was made in 1797, Caravaggio's Deposizione. He was still in the side of I mean, every church has enough art for a journey just to visit the art. Hope you visit Jesus. This is the entrance door. Here we are in the nave of Chiesa Nuova. Very ornamented ceiling. In this area of room, the ceilings are like that. They ornament them a great deal. During the Baroque period, to give you the illusion that you're looking up to heaven through the arches and frames. Side altars. And now we're going close to the main altar. And John can give us a little expository. The main piece, the main painting up there is by Rubens, Peter Paul Rubens. And uh, 
he was commissioned to paint it surrounding, you see the little mm. oval space, which is an ancient image of Mary and Jesus. He actually did it twice because he didn't like the way it <laughs> turned out the first time because the light wasn't hitting it correctly. But anyway, so this is Rubens and a Caravaggio, even though that one was cut. Ornate organ pipes. And the dome again. Image of heaven. And now we're going into the beautiful shrine and monument dedicated to St. Philip Neri, an Oratorian priest, founded of the Oratorians, a little community in Italy way back when. This is also by Rubens. This is Rubens painting of Philip Neri. Philip Neri, pray to me, and that's his body underneath. <clears throat> Beautiful, exquisite chapel. His work, healing. Beautiful little chapel. And we kneel here for a second, say a prayer. <sighs> We're praying in front of the silver casket of St. Philip Neri. A highly ornamented frame the painting of St. Philip Neri. The columns are velvet, covered. The dome is coffered. Often called the priest of Rome, St. Philip Neri, founder of the Oratorian Fathers. He was, had a great love for music, and the word oratorio comes from his ministry, and adjacent to this was a school of music. This is Friends of the Word bringing you Churches of Rome. This is the painting of Mary being received by the high priests. The presentation of Mary in the temple by Federico Barocci and he died in 1612. Give you a better view. A little bit of a glare. Every little chapel is ornamented and beautiful. Celebrating the Baroque, which is a post Reformation movement in art after the Council of Trent, Mary being crowned by Jesus in the Messiah altar, and another view of the broken pipes. The kids in church taking a tour. Chiesa Nuova. Church of St. Philip Mary. Here we are early in the morning at Piazza Navona. Well, it's 11 o'clock. At first, it's early in the morning. We just passed the statue of Pasquino, where the public notices were put. And this is the beautiful work of Piazza Navona. By this stone, this fountain here, it's called Il Moro, because the guy in the middle looks like a moor. This was by Bernini. Mm -hmm. And then the main fountain group of the Four Rivers is also by Bernini. And the fountain on the far end was only done in the 19th century. Okay, tell us a story about this church with the St. Agatha turning away from the fountains. You can't see it close, but you can see her right in the middle. Okay. All right. So, 
Uh, that's the Church of San Agnese, Saint a a uh, Saint Agnes in Agona, because this whole piazza used to be a race course, and that's Agona refers mm. to that. Okay. So now the church was constructed by the architect Borromini, who was in competition with Bernini, who did that sculpture with the that holds up the obelisk in the middle, right? And so the two were kind of in competition with each other, right? And there's what Borromini did to insult Bernini's Fountain of the Four Rivers is he put a sculpture up there near the top of the facade of St. Agnes looking away from the fountain <laughs> as if it wasn't worth looking at. Whereas when we go closer to Bernini's fountain, you'll see one of them is putting his hand up in disgust toward the church of Borromi. And the palace immediately to the left is the Pompili family palace. And one of whose ancestors was Pope Innocent X, but now it's the Brazilian embassy. We entered from Piazza Navona to this church dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We're looking at the chapel of San Giacomo, St. James. We entered the side door and now we look on to, oh, Santa Ana. The main altar is here. We'll get to that in a few seconds. Here we are walking around, beautiful church, sacred heart, Jesus. This is Venerable Enrico Vergus. This actually is the main entrance of the church. Very interesting, it's almost a square inside. Old lady in a beautiful back altar. Outside it's hustle and bustle because it's the Piazza Navona, but here inside it's peaceful. St. Joseph and the Child Jesus, and of course, Nostra Patrona, Santa Ana, once again. We left Santa Ana home for this trip because it's too hot today. So she's relaxed. But Santa Ana is here on the side of the altar. Another beautiful statue of Mary. The choir loft is by Tori Piana. And under it is the Statue of Our Lady, and Baby Jesus. Crossing in front of the sanctuary. It's unusual the way they show the Sacred Heart on Baby Jesus. Yeah, it's, she's holding it like she's pointing to it. Yeah, I know, but you show it close. It's adult, so. Yeah. Little baby Jesus and Sacred Heart. Okay, we're in the church of Sacred Cori of Jesu, Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we visit St. Anthony. And we'll continue our journey on Piazza Navona. This is being brought to you by Friends of the Word with Father Luis Gertie. Thank you for joining us. Pass this on to your family and friends.
This is the church of St. Peter in Chains. We took a long voyage from St. Peter outside the walls. St. Paul's outside the walls. This is the big piazza here. Okay, now we're gonna go inside. And what a surprise we have inside. The Esquiline Hill. Church of St. Peter in Chains. St. Pietro in Vincolo. Very ornate church from started in the fourth 432 and through the years of course renovated they're probably getting ready ready for a wedding we're going to walk around the high altar is topped by a beautiful tabernacle of the kingdom the frescoes in the apse fresco on the ceiling a picture of St. Peter having made his victory through his martyrdom. Let's walk around the side of the church. The center aisle is nave is closed, probably for a company. Now we're going to all the side altars. Very busy church, very historically important. Side altars, easily accessible. No places to rest. It is dedicated to various saints. <laughs> and here's the the setup for the bride and groom. miracle in the Gospels, or the Acts of the Apostles of the Angel freeing St. Peter. And as we walk in, we have a surprise prepared for us, Michelangelo's Moses. Originally designed to be a part of the tomb of Julius II. successors refused to allow it to be there because we're supposed to be right in the center of St. Peter's a little egotistical magnificent sculpture of Moses this has been part of a more elaborate scheme for Julius II's tomb Moses is huge. Very known to the tablets. Sitting with the, um, the rays of light on his head, and the translation came up to be horns, but not really Kordunu horns, but it was rays of light. We look into the sanctuary. And we can barely make out the little chapel beneath the altar that contains the chains of St. Peter. Let's move to another section of the church and see what we can do there. Oops, I'm not alone. Move to other people. Nope, ain't gonna work from here either. But we'll something there. Okay, this is the traveling word. Friends of the word, showing you churches of Rome today. St. Pietro in Vincola, St. Peter in Chains. Okay, from this vantage point, we're behind a column. We see in the sanctuary a copy of the painting by Raphael of the release of St. Peter. And right in the center, what we're looking at is a reliquary containing St. Peter's chains, hence the name of the church. We're in the church of St. Pietro in Vinco, St. Peter in Chains. There's no comfort to 
tradition of families' churches, one is more beautiful than the other, and it will serve the same purpose, giving glory.